Hi, I'm Amy from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and I'm a self-taught interdisciplinary artist, which means I have taught myself how to do the various crafts, arts, video, and photography you'll see in this series. In this series, I want to chronicle and share my inspirations, where I get my ideas from, how I develop and create my wearable art, all the way to photographing it. For this series, I used the equipment and resources I had on hand, shot and edited everything myself, and my husband Tanner wrote original music. I apologize in advance for any mistakes in the audio and visuals, and I hope you'll enjoy it anyways. These are some of the items I've made. I base each of them on my different backgrounds, experiences, stories I've written, a dream I've had, or a place I've visited. I do a mixture of modern and traditional techniques in leather, metal, wood, and paper. I mainly use modern techniques with machines. As I had a spinal accident, which left me partially disabled, with other health problems, and in chronic pain. So I have a tough time doing many of the physically intensive processes without using some sort of machine, tools, and the full-time help of my husband and lead studio hand tanner. Hi, I'm Amy's husband, Tanner. In 2007, I was watching Amy make her metal jewelry. I was completely taken with her pieces and her designs. And I said to her, hey, you should try selling some of your work or putting some of it in galleries, but she wasn't interested at the time. In 2008, I convinced her to start showing her work. Amy had no shortage of incredible ideas and wanted to explore all kinds of traditional metalworking techniques. But due to her spinal injury, she was unable to do some of the steps in the process on a repetitive basis. So I started apprenticing under her after my day job and on the weekends. This way she could still create these amazing pieces and not be limited by her disability. At this time, we only did metalwork, but in 2010, we started to incorporate leatherwork as well. Again, we were keen to explore the traditional approaches to leatherwork with Amy handling much of the design, carving and detail work, while I focused more on cutting, dyeing and assembly. In 2015, when we started doing more of the large-scale wearable artwork pieces, I found an opportunity to combine one of my other creative outlets, poetry, with the work that I create with Amy. I have been writing poetry since I was a teenager, and Amy was always my biggest fan, so it was really exciting for me to write poems based on the concepts, characters, and themes behind the pieces. My other passion is music, so we've explored ways in which we can incorporate some of the music that I write into the way that our work is experienced. To me, it has always been the end result, the expression that's important, and not trying to recreate some sort of arcane process to get there. I think it's an amazing time to create items through the marriage of age-old techniques with the possibilities of modern technologies. I love creating pieces from just basic raw materials and I'm always excited to see what the final item will look like. One of my favorite parts of the whole process is when Amy excitedly unveils her latest designs to me to see what I think. It's always magical to see what direction the new designs are headed in and to begin envisioning how they will look once we made them and what colors we want to try first. Since I'm the one that does the physical setup of the booth, it's usually me you'll see at the shows. One of the reasons we have done so many in-person shows is that I love interacting with our customers and fans. It's always amazing to have customers come back to our booth wearing a piece I helped them pick out, and some of them are even from as long ago as our first show. I love how so many people have told us how much our work makes them happy, how they found it a source of inspiration in their life, or it has some sort of special meaning to them or someone special to them. These are always such humbling things to hear, 
And to know that something I helped create made such an impact in someone else's life really inspires me to keep going. Capturing images of my wearable art to tell a story through photography is another one of my passions. Often I capture the pieces on a model or actor. I feel this brings the wearable art to life. In this three-part series, I'm going to take you through the creation process, photographing it, and why I made it. This series will also include a short story based on a dream I had, which influenced the design of these pieces. And this story will be told with my simple animations and quick drawings throughout the series. You don't see a lot of wearable fantasy art in Alberta, so let me show you how everything started. My inspirations come from my early childhood, which revolved around spending time in nature, drawing and reading on my family's farm. We didn't have cable or a satellite dish growing up, so I would often imagine stories I had read coming to life while I was exploring nature or playing in the woods. I would look for interesting things I could add to my own stories or drawings and I would routinely scare my younger sister with my stories of magical creatures who lived in the forest. One of the things I enjoyed the most was the variety of plant life on and around my family home. I had always wanted to be either an artist, writer, or scientist, and I feel what I do now is a little of all three. My inspirations continued in Edmonton, where I moved to study biology at the University of Alberta, and I fell in love with Edmonton's beautiful natural areas, which inspired more arts and crafts, and making more art led me to create it full time. When I feel like I want to reconnect with nature or need inspiration, I go to my favorite places in and around Edmonton. The White Mud Ravine is one of my favorite places. And it is the closest in appearance to where I grew up with its rugged beauty and wild natural areas. Another one of my favorite places is the River Valley. I love looking at the North Saskatchewan River, especially since it's the same river that continues on to Rocky Mountain House. The river I feel connects my present and my past. We often go to Horlack Park. It has lots of wildlife, a lake, and open meadows to explore. My family and I like to go here to watch the birds. Another of my favorite places is the Matart Conservatory. It has picturesque grounds that include a wide range of vegetation and insects within a peaceful park. This is an area where a person can visit indoors or outdoors for many hours.
I even find many inspirations right in my backyard, where I grow as many vegetables, herbs, and flowers as possible. While gardening, I often enter a meditative state, and it allows me to come up with new ideas. I had a dream where I was packing away winter clothing into cardboard boxes to store in my basement for the summer. My husband told me I needed to protect my clothing from the moths and gestured to the single light bulb above us where moths were flying in a panic way around the yellow light. The moths would occasionally hit the glass with a thump and then start the frenzied process over again. Once I had finished closing the boxes, we took the boxes to the basement. The house was similar to what we have now, but in the dream, the ivory walls had green tinged baseboards running the length of the hallways. As we made our way downstairs to the basement, we could hear the moths hitting the glass of the light bulb. In the basement, all books and sewing supplies and musical instruments line the rooms, just like in our real house. But there was something new in the basement, a green door, which matched the baseboards from upstairs. that stood against a plain white wall. We opened the door to reveal Now on to my project drawings. The design I wanted to do, based off my inspirations, sort of flashed before my eyes and I tried to capture it as rapidly as I could. I'm going with a moth and a night theme. I will reveal more of the details as to why I chose the theme in the upcoming parts of the series. The ideas or images of what I'm going to make can come over time in succession, or in this case, they can come rapidly at once with barely enough time to sketch them down before I forget what I wanted to create. While planning my project, I do a little initial painting, just to see if the colors go together before I test it on the leather. Leather is quite expensive and very time consuming to get it to where it can be painted. And after a few bad color choices, I now paint almost all the items ahead of time in a variety of mediums on paper. I rarely finish painting my drawings as it's more of just a test to see what colors are going to look good together. Since the moon and starlight guides moths, I want to incorporate the moon and stars into the wearable art piece. I knew I wanted to do a mask and a headpiece separately, 
and then combine them for a completely different look during the photo shoot. I'm going to make a mask and headpiece so I can do a variety of slightly different photos or maybe show a transformation of the model becoming a moth. I'm not entirely sure what colors I'm going to do yet, so I have done some variations. Although the green moth I saw in my garden was very beautiful, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with brown and gold. For this armor style piece, I decided on a moon with stars and clouds. The moon is actually my profile. I tried my husband's and daughter's profile first, and it didn't quite look as mischievous as I wanted. So I tried my own as a joke, and my husband loved it so it stuck. I'm going to do the top in blue with a little bit of brown and gold. I have a dark blue background I'm thinking about using for the photo shoot as well. Each of these drawings for the leather pieces are going to be turned into patterns that can be read by a machine that will help me create the items. Here is a necklace design. One reason I started making jewelry was because of my love for stones and rocks. The necklace itself is a large moth and I added stars to incorporate the night theme of the project. I wanted to incorporate one of my favorite stones, Labradorite, which gives the appearance of having captured the northern lights. Additionally, for the photo shoot, I'm going to make a couple of props and set up a small backdrop. I'm going to make a prop for my photo shoot based on the moon from this pendant I made. I'm making a moon because moths are mainly nocturnal and travel by the light cast from the moon and stars. I'm also making additional moths and stars to attach to any extra pieces I make and to the mask and armor style corset. When I told Tanner my ideas and showed him my drawings, he said go for it and he would help in any way he could to get the idea done. In the next episode, I will take you through the creation process, as well as on a little trip to where we buy our leather.